Most Vetric users only scratch the surface of what the software can do, but today I'm going to show you 10 hidden 2D design tricks that will make your workflow faster, easier, and way more creative. Whether you've been using vCarve, Aspire, or Cut2D for years, or you're just getting started, I guarantee there are at least a few tips in here you've never seen before. I'm Kyle from Learn Your CNC, and let's jump right into the first one. In this tip, we're gonna be looking at how to fix the corners of something that may not have that sharp corner that you're after. So sometimes when you trace an image like this one I have imported, and then if we take a better look at the vectors that have been traced, if we select that and click the letter N to go to our node edit mode, you may notice some corners did not get that nice sharp corner that you wanted. And you could try to individually node edit these, but that can get a little challenging sometimes. There is a nice easy way to do this where you're not gonna mess up the rest of the lines. And that is by taking whatever line is here currently, right click on that and click delete span. And then you're gonna go to edit objects and find what's called the extend tool. Click on that. That's gonna open up this tool that allows you to click both ends of these lines to be able to extend them together into a nice sharp tip. And you can see now you get that nice sharp tip that you wanted and you can do that for all the corners or any lines that you want to extend to connect together. For this tip, we're gonna look at a shortcut on how to quickly align your vector lines either straight vertically or horizontally. So right here we have two examples of some shapes that are not currently straight in alignment. If you select these and click the letter N on your keyboard to go to node edit mode, you could see all the nodes for all the corners. If you select all of those nodes, and then let's say we click the letter X in this case, look at that, it lines them all up vertically in the X direction, which is left to right. If you wanna align them horizontally, you can select two nodes in the horizontal plane and click the letter Y to align those in the horizontal way. So just select two nodes, click the letter X for vertical and the letter Y for horizontal. If you wanna control which ones they are aligning to, you can single select the first one, that's the one it will align to, and then hold shift and select the other one and then click the letter X or the letter Y, depending on which direction you're orientating these. And it will always align to the first one you select. For this tip, I'm gonna show you a really cool node editing trick that not many people know about. So if you select a vector and click the letter N on your keyboard to go to node edit mode, you can right click on a node that is on both sides. So this one's symmetrical. And if you click mirror horizontal or right click and do mirror vertical, either one of those you select, you can mirror whatever you do on one side to the other side. So in order to do this, you have to hold shift and select two nodes, one on both sides. And whatever I do to one side, you can see will automatically apply to the other side. It saves you from having to repeat something over and over again on both sides. Sides. You can also select multiple nodes on both sides and move them all together. So you can adjust either single nodes or multiple nodes depending on how many you select and whatever you do to one side will automatically apply to the other side when you use that mirror feature within the node editing and that works both horizontally and vertically. This tip, I'm gonna show you how to use the distort tool with text. So as you can see, we have two curved lines that we drew one and then copied it. And then we have a simple text. And if you ever want to distort some text within two curves or even one curve, you can go to what's called the distort tool. And that's in transform objects. It's the second one from the end. Click on that. And then you wanna make sure you select between two curves in this case. And you do have to select this in a certain order for this to work. So you're gonna select your text, then hold shift, select the bottom line, and then the top line. And when you do that, it should give you a green check mark and you're gonna click apply. And look at that. Now distorted our text to fit inside of there. You can still edit it further if you want to move it around with the nodes inside of this. But as you can see, wherever you place them, and then when you click close, you can now carve this in a nice distorted format, which looks really cool on many different projects. It's a great way to add a little bit of creativity in just about any project you may wanna make. All right, I wanna take a quick second to tell you about something I built that I think a lot of you are really going to find helpful. It's called the CNC Hub, and it's a completely free website where you can compare CNC machines across all the top brands by bed size, price, features, and more. You can even see real user reviews and do side-by-side -side comparisons right on the site. We've also started to add CNC software to the site, and I'm working on even more features, like easier ways to figure out which CNC bits to use for your projects and other tools to save you time. So whether you're shopping for your first CNC or you're just curious what else is out there, check out the cnchub.com. I really think you're gonna get a lot out of it and again, it's totally free. All right, let's get back to the video. 
In this tip, we're going to be looking at using the alignment tool to evenly space objects inside of other shapes. So let's say for this example, we wanted to carve all of these oval shapes inside of this rectangular shape, but we wanted them to be nice and centered and evenly spaced. So instead of trying to move these manually all the way around or using guidelines or something that's going to take a little bit more time, there's a really simple tool for this, and that is in transform objects. It's the last one called the alignment tool. And for this tool, you can use it many different Different ways. What we're going to do for this example is select all the ovals and then hold shift and select the rectangle last. That's the shape we want to go inside of. Down here at the space selection, you're going to checkbox the inside last vector. That will make sure everything's centered inside of that last vector. And then we have a horizontal and vertical space selection. So I'm going to select the horizontal and you will see that will evenly space everything horizontally inside of that last selected rectangle. And the last thing we need to do is center them vertically. And you can easily do that with the align to selection. We're going to center it top to bottom and look at that. Now everything is perfectly centered and evenly spaced, even from the edges of the rectangle. And that would give you a perfect layout every time that is quick and easy to repeat. In this tip, I'm going to show you how to resize a bunch of shapes at the same time. And in this example, I'm going to be using a cribbage board with a bunch of circles used to drill the holes. Sometimes you may design something like this and later on you find that the hole size needs to be a different diameter. And in older versions of Vetric, you would have to actually manually scale each and every one of these holes or recreate them all together to make this work. Well, in the newer versions, it's much easier to do that. You don't have to do every one manually anymore. So instead, what you're going to do is select all of the circles or it doesn't have to be circles it could be any shape that are all the same size and then you're going to want to go to transform objects and go to the second tool for your scale tool in this tool you want to make sure you do scale items individually that will scale each circle in this case all individually by themselves and then you just come down and you change the size whatever you need it to be however make sure the anchor is set to the center point that way they keep their original locations and make sure the x and y is linked together that way you scale the x and y dimension at the same time so now when we type in a new value here let's say i type in 0.1 and click apply you'll see all the circles get updated at the same exact time and you can type in a new number let's say 0.25 click apply and you see everything updates all together at the same time. So this is a quick and easy way to scale multiple objects at the same time as long as they're all the same size to begin with. For this tip, let's say we're trying to make a tray shape that looks something like this, sort of like a pill shape. And I'm going to show you a really fast and easy way to draw something like this with one simple node editing tip. And let's first look at how you may draw this if you didn't know this tip to begin with. You may draw a rectangle first as the center part, and then you may go and find your draw circle tool and then draw a circle and then draw another circle and then click close and then you'll have to select all of those and then you'll have to go to the weld tool to weld it all together. So as you can see, that is a little bit of a process and multi steps involved. It's not too complicated, but there is a way quicker way to do this. So let's try and delete this and let's draw a new rectangle. So I draw the rectangle first, which represents the inside of the tray shape. And before I tell you the tip on this, let me show you how quick it is. So I'm just gonna click one key, another key, another key, and I'm done. So as you can see, that took literally about two seconds to make that shape. So let's see how that's done. I used a keyboard shortcut, but you don't have to. You can simply select the object, right click, go to node edit mode, or click the letter N to go there quicker, which is what I did. And then on the ends, you can right click on that and click to arc. And you can see that will make it into an arc. So that's the tip is right clicking on a shape and switching it to either a straight line segment, a bezier curve or an arc. So whatever line type you have, you can switch it to a different type of line. And there is keyboard shortcuts, L, B or A. So line, bezier or arc. So if we just hover over a line and click the letter A, that switches it to an arc. So as you can see, it's a very quick and easy way to switch the way the shapes are drawn to make it faster to design different types of shapes. So definitely play around with that tip and see what different types of shapes that you can create just by switching line segments to different types. 
For this tip, we're in the 3D view and you could do this in the 2D or 3D view, but I just wanted to show you here so you could see all the different objects together. We have 2D vectors, we have a bitmap image, and we have a 3D clip art component. So the tip here is a faster way to copy and paste objects where you don't have to right click on an object, then right click copy, and then right click again, and then right click paste, and then take that copied object and move it to a new location. You can also right click and click duplicate, but you still have to take that duplicate and then move it to a new location. So as you can see, there are ways to copy objects, but it does take several clicks to do this. Let me show you a better way. And we can select everything all at once just to show you, it doesn't matter what type of object you're working with, but if you just hold control and drag it, that will automatically copy it when you hold control. So whether it's 2D vectors, images, or 3D models, you can just hold control and drag them and you will get a copy automatically. Another tip is if you hold the Alt key as well as the Control key, the Alt key will keep it aligned horizontally or vertically in a nice straight line. But if you let go of the Alt key, then you can move it around anywhere on the screen. And by holding Control, it will make a copy of that object. I use this tip all the time in my projects because it's a really quick and easy way to copy things. In this tip, we're gonna look at a bitmap trace tip that I definitely wish I knew earlier, but once I found this out, it was a game changer for me. So for this example, I imported an image of Batman and there's several different logos here. And let's say we just wanted one of these that we wanted to carve. We didn't want all the extra stuff. So normally you would go to trace bitmap tool. You would then click preview and then apply and close. And then you have a lot of extra vectors you need to get rid of just to go back to that single one that you wanted. And that just creates a lot of extra work for yourself having to delete all that extra stuff. So instead what you can do is select the image, go back to trace bitmap, and all you need to do is directly on the bitmap, draw a selection box around the area that you want to trace. In this case, if I draw a selection box here and click preview and now click apply and close. Now if I hide the image, you can see that's the only part that got traced. Nothing else got traced and I don't have to do any more work to clean that up. Now I have exactly what I was after. This is one of those tips I use all the time. So make sure you try this out in your workflow. I think you're gonna really like this one. And for this tip, this is one of those tips that not too many people know about, and that is being able to edit images directly inside of Vetric. So as many things you can do with images, this is an imported image. And if I go to edit objects and if you click the picture editor button. This will give you a bunch of tools that you can use to edit the image. You can change the contrast, brightness, the gamma. You can invert it. So if you wanna do an invert image or a grayscale image to remove the color, another thing you could do is add borders. So you can do a rectangle border or even an oval border. And this gives it a really cool look and softens the edges. So if you're gonna use the photo V carve or even the sketch carving toolpath, this will give it a nicer, softer edge around the image rather than that hard rectangle image that you may not want. So that's something you can look into. We can also turn that off. Another thing you could do is draw a shape around it. We can even take a piece of clip art from our clip art library and you can select any one that you'd like and then you can resize it to the picture wherever you want to crop it and you can actually crop the image from a closed vector so with the image and the vector selected there is a button called crop bitmap if you select that you'll see your image will now crop to that shape and that's really handy to use if you're trying to make a custom image shape for maybe a photo v-carve or a laser engraving or even the sketch carving toolpath. It really gives your images a unique look that will be very helpful for any projects you may need that for. And that's the 10 things you probably didn't know Vetric could do in 2D design. Which one of these tips are you going to try first? Drop it down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next video in this series where we'll be covering the hidden toolpath tricks inside of Vetric. And if you want to take your skills even further, check out my full Vetric Master Training course. I'll put the link for that down in the description. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.